Hey motorheads, I'm still out here working on this Dana 60 front. Got a last couple things to do on the housing quick and then I'm going to start getting to the final assembly. Alright, so one of the things I've got to do on the housing here is grind this down. You can see there's a huge lip on the edge of the diff cover. That's no good. And then I'm going to take this chunk here down, most of the way down to the bolt. Um, it's going to get ground off on rocks eventually, but I might as well give it a head start. And then the last thing on the housing is to put some shock mounts on. It's, the housing is upside down, so that's why the shock mount's upside down in my hand right now. But... Uh, We'll get those jammed on there, and then we'll start thinking about painting it and doing some final assembly. All right, folks, so uh, just a few minutes of grinding, and you can see that things are smoothed off and looking much better. Uh, getting out the cutoff wheel was a good decision. All in all, I saved about a half inch, so uh, that's significant. That's a big deal, and uh, Farley approves. Okay, so uh, with that stuff all installed and the knuckle cleaned up, you just slip it on. Okay, next I got to get the uh, the kingpins, the lower kingpins themselves cleaned up, and uh, figure out what I'm going to do about the grease cirques or not. Okay, so we're back with the lower kingpins, and uh, cleaned them up real good. I pulled off the greaser, and luckily the grease that was in there was soft enough. I was able to blow it out and uh, clean it out with some uh, with some brake cleaner um, gave the seal surface a quick polish with some 400 grit it's a long ways from perfect but this is an exactly a high speed seal so since we're sealing this for grease and since the 
Well, you know what? You don't need to seal this because the seal is down in there, not out here. So this surface, I was going to just throw RTV on it, but that wouldn't do anything. So basically, just run her in. So these were a bear to get out, so I'm not shocked that I got to tap it in with a soft hammer and knock my other knuckle off on the other side. All right. Well, I ran these down. I decided to not torque them. I just ran them down quick with electric impact. And uh, I've got the Zerks working. They're both flowing grease. So uh, we will come back and torque these later after we get the upper kingpins done. So uh, I guess we'll move on to the upper kingpins now. Okay, so we're gonna do a take two on that upper kingpin. Um, I just did the I just did the driver side. It sucked. Um, so here's the passenger side. We'll incorporate some learnings. So this is the stock kingpin bushing. It's this plastic bushing. It's got a little split in it so you can crank it down or you use the spring. Uh, it's got this alignment notch here that goes to the outside and aligns with a notch in the knuckle. Um, I'm upgrading to these bronze bushings. I've got these nice spiral grooves. Uh, uses a roll pin that I really fought with on the other side on this. So uh, we'll put this in and hopefully this goes better than the other side. And tape our roll pin first. Tape off of the bushing. Roll pin goes to the outside. Take a little soft hammer and get her in the ballpark. As you can see, I didn't skimp on the grease. All right. So Next, we're going to make sure we have that slot lined up, and sure enough, we do. Then, here's my big learning. I'm going to take the vice grip and crimp down this one end of this roll pin, because it is, even though it's tapered, it's way too big to start. see if we can get this going in there. All right, success. My learnings from last time paid off this time. So I'm just going to take this punch and knock that pin down so it's at least flush with the top surface. And uh, I'll take a little bit of a smaller punch and we'll even drive it in a bit below. All right. So there's that. Next is the high steer arm. So I'm going to clean things up a little bit here and uh, we'll come back and get the high steer arms on and get this adjusted. Okay, here we are assembling the high steer kit. I bought this kit off of eBay. Um, so far, so good. Came really well packaged. You can see the studs had little protectors on them. Um, the studs have a short end and a long end. Short end goes into the knuckle, obviously. I like to give them about a half turn back because you don't want to. You want to be using the uh, stretch of the stud. To lock this in you don't want to be uh, 
jamming, jamming that shoulder into the threads. You do what you want though. You don't like that? Fine. Um, with this bolt that goes through, um, this is obviously, this is the top of the arm. And, uh, Run that bolt in, but not poking past, so just below the surface. Then we've got this washer, and uh, you'll actually be turning this bolt and washer to uh, set your preload. So we'll just set the washer on top of the bushing. Drop that on. And then we've got these nuts that look suspiciously like half 20 lug nuts that fit into tapers on the arm. And we're just going to we're just going to run these nuts down. Wait a second. I almost forgot. That's a ceiling surface under there. And so my plan is to use a little black RTV on that. There are gaskets for this. There's gaskets that went under the little spring cap device. But, uh, I don't know, just seems counterproductive to me to throw a gasket in there. So we'll just RTV this a little bit. Hopefully I'm not making a big mistake here, but it seems like it should seal up good and everything should work okay with this. If you think I made a mistake with the RTV, uh, you've got experience at this, leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know why you feel that way and uh, how many of these you built. grab my torque wrench and I'll be right back. Oh boy. She's tight already. Oh boy. All right. Well, I clearly need to take something off of that bushing. As you can see, I'm not even pressing on this. And, uh, Obviously, the bushing's too tall to work here, so I have lots of adjustment on it. I'll probably just shave off, I don't know, 30, 40 thousandths, something like that. And here we are back at the lathe. I'm going to try to do this with the tripod in the way. I'll show you what's happening here. Okay, so we barely touch off, come over here, make sure we're running on the indicator. We're, we've pulled back from the, from the part. And uh, we feed this in. We're going to do it in two cuts. So, 65 thousandths cut and 60 cut to make the eighth inch.
So I'm not uh, attributing this to any kind of bad part, bad vendor, anything like that. This is just one of those things. Uh, one guy's bushing pocket is taller in the arm. Another guy's bushing is taller. So I mean, I'm just mixing and matching parts. But you can see this is a success. So now, now I can go through the procedure of torquing this. Now, now that it didn't tighten up on me any, now I can start to run this in. And it's not far. I'll run it in good and tight to seat it. Back it off. Not really sure what the spec is on this, but I like that. That feels good. And uh, we're going to lock her down right there. Except for how do you get a wrench in there. So uh, I'll be back when I get the right wrench. Alright, so we're going to lock in this adjustment. And uh, I'm just making a mark there because this is an inch and a half on the outside of that nut. And... Uh, I have to use a socket so you know I can feel it and then I can torque it and make sure it didn't move and I can check my mark and my mark didn't move so and it still feels good all right one side done on to the other side definitely happy there glad I made that trim on that ahead of time instead of doing 45 test fits. And there we go. Adjust it in nicely. Mark. All good. All right, motorheads, going to wrap this video up. Um, so I've got my knuckles on, my kingpins are rebuilt. Had a little bit of difficulty between the spring eliminator and the bronze bushing kit, but when you're buying parts from different vendors, there is no industry standard, so it's not exactly shocking. Uh, this is very lucky that I could just trim the bushings up a little bit on the lathe and make everything work, though. So... Uh, Next video, we'll continue on with assembling the axle. Thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and if you get buddies that are uh, into this kind of thing, please tell them about the channel. Thanks.